Gita lends itself to interpretation. So we have Baladev's interpretation, Vishwanath, Bhakti, all these different ways, depending on how you read it. But we will see when you go for those very high, fine uh, level interpretations, it will be in a few verses where they're showing this sort of potential. And I remember in my own case, as I was coming under the influence of Guru Maharaj's ontological method and interpretation, I remember this is like in Los Angeles in 1981. I'm reading Bhagavad Gita and I'm reading the sloka Mahat Manas Tumam Partha Devim Prakritim Asrita Bhajan Tunani Manaso Gyatva Bhuti Adim Abhyayam. I believe that's it. So, but suddenly I'm reading this and I'm thinking of all the things I've heard from Guru Maharaj. Mahat Manas Tumam Partan. Mahat Manas. Well, who, if you trace the Mahatma thread, great souls, who were the greatest souls? They're the Brajagopis, Radharani and Brajagopis, right? De, who are Devi Prakriti Masrita, Gopis. They're totally under the shelter of the Devi Prakriti. And what do they do? Bhajan Twananya Manaso. 24 hours engagement. Guru Maharaj says it's only possible in Madhura Rasa. So Bhajan Twananya, if to the extreme, must mean Madhura Rasa. Uh, Gopi Bhajan. Right? So but anyway, I found these sort of concepts streaming out of the sloka, and I'm thinking, where did this come from? And then I realized, oh, because I'm hearing from Srila Sridharmar's all these other concepts, when I go to look at these things, new things are streaming out, new possibilities of interpretation. You know, the nutshell slokas, ahang sarvasya prabhavo. Mata, Guru Maharaj will say, it's an indicative of Mahaprabhu. Everything comes from me, including svabhaktebhyam sudha bhajanam mudram upadishan, the method by which to worship me, saying it's an indication of, you know, uh, Guru Rupa Harim Goram of Goranga Mahaprabhu, because even the method to worship him comes from, oh, Mahaprabhu. Like Guru Dev, when Guru Maharaj gave that mantra, Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam Shruti Matam, etc., that it's a combination of the Bhagavatam Sloka and the Rig Veda. When it comes to Hiranya Purusham, Jyotir Preeti Tanum Hiranya Purusham, Hiranya Purusha, the golden person, is generally taken to be like uh, uh, Garbhadakshai Vishnu or, or, or Mahavishnu, golden eggs coming out. Here he's saying, Jyotir Priti Tanum, Brahma Sangita, saying where the uh, Brahma, you're talking about Brahma, has, is showing an affectionate position. The Hiranya Purusham is who? the golden avatar, Goranga Mahaprabhu, with the limits of preeti, of love and affection, Krishna Prem, Mahabhav Sarupini Radha Thakurani. So those are very deep level interpretations uh, according to the angle of vision of the devotee who's interpreting at that time and what is their necessity because we, must say, we might add, what is someone's necessity for these things? It's Guru Maharaj's necessity. The, the higher Vaishnavas who are tasting and relishing, it's not that sort of an exercise, but it's according to their heart's inner necessity and going deeper and deeper into Krishna conception that these possibilities and levels of interpretation come streaming out to them.